What's going on guys? Welcome back. Today we're again doing Bastion from Hack the Box, which is part of the registered penetration tester track that we have been doing in the last two weeks. Okay, so in this machine, uh, it's actually an easy machine, right? It doesn't have any sort of uh, difficult aspects of the uh, offensive cyber security. So we're going to start the machine and start hacking. So, so the first thing I did is the in-map scan as all the time so use that dash a switch to enumerate the services the versions do service or os detection and i've discovered a couple ports we have 22 for ssh scrolling down and we have as you can see the scan shows that the machine might be running windows server 2016 standard and it looks like we have smb server running here according to these ports so scrolling all the way down we see also the NetBIOS computer name, so it's helpful if we add the, uh, the, 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 the DNS name to the host file. So we go ahead and add bastion.htp to the host file. So if we cat etc host grab bastion, you will see the entry I have added, the IP address and the DNS name. So what I did next, scrolling up. Okay, so I, I think I have to show you guys with the commands and what I did here. Okay, let's scroll on here. Let's see. Okay, going back here to the nmap scan. All right, so we have SMB shares running. So we use SMB map. We use the user anonymous as an attempt to map the shares. And this is the IP address. If we attempt this, we're going to strip all of the shares. So why we try anonymous here? If you go back to the in-map scan, scroll down. Um, let's see here. So account used, guest, right? Authentication level on the user level. So that's why here we try with the user anonymous. As you can see, we received the output below here. And the output shows that we have backups as a share and the permissions are read and write. So if we can, if we can log in to the SMB server and list the contents of this share, okay, let's do that. So SMB client. And here we put the IP address of the user, uh, the uh, machine, and the share name. And we use an empty user here. Enter. And we're going to be able to log into the share. Supply an empty password. And you log in. So DIR. And we are inside the contents of the share. Let's take a look. So we have note. So we can download the note by issuing the command get note of text. Okay. Other than that, we note that we have Windows Image Backup Directory. If we see the there, DR, let's cd it to the PC name, cdl4. Okay, so we have backup data here. Let's take a look at this. So, double quotes because we have spaces, or you can escape the space with backslashes. For now, we're going to use double quotes. They are. And we have what appears to be XML files. And take a look here. So we have these VHD files. So these are Windows image backups. And the size is huge. So we cannot download them to the machine. So what's going to, to, go to, what's going to happen here? Let's first take a look at the notes. Okay. And then we decide what to do. Probably there is a hint for us in this note. So cat sysadmin saying please don't transfer the entire backup file locally the VPN to the subsidiary office is too slow and that's justifiable because the backup files are huge so 
and it's bec it becomes clear guys that we need to find a way to view these backup files so what we're going to do we're going to mount the share okay the entire share the backups starting from this point so we're going to mount the backup share to my local machine and then we're going to use guest mount specifically guest mount to be able to navigate through the VHD files okay so mount okay that's the command so mount dash t cfs and here the full path right so we are actually mounting the uh, path here starting from so this is wrong actually you should mount the path should be like this mount the full share okay this is the path of the share and this is where I will mount it on my local machine and specify the username to be anonymous. Okay. Once we do that, let's take a look. LS. So Bastion V3. Doesn't matter the name, right? That's the name I chose. So CD Bastion V3. And as you can see, the contents of the full share have been dumped or, or mounted to my local machine now the next thing i want to explore or i want to navigate through the file system through the backups but there is no way to do that because the files are in vhd so how to be able how to do that i mean how to explore that so what we do we're going to use guest mount okay so guest mount guest mount is a way to um, mount files of this nature vht files so what we're going to do we're going to use dash dash add okay and here we put the full path to the vht image which is the windows image backup file we have two if we scroll up we have two one that actually the name the, the, the name of these the names of these two files are the same except one number here the first octet it ends with three the other octet it ends with four so you can actually mount both so here i mounted one time for three and other time you can add the uh, one that ends with four here and then i use that as inspector to be able to, to be able to navigate through the files and this is the path to my machine or in my machine where i will mount the contents so i created a new directory uh, was vht and to that directory i mounted the images so we're going to run these comments two times the first one will be for the file that ends with three at this position and other command will be for the file that ends with four at this position don't forget that to add backslashes here the backslashes are here because we have spaces we're going to escape them once you do that if we enter cd back and as you can see this is the vht file if you view the contents of vht exactly i need sudo here as you can see we actually uh, can view the contents of the file system the windows directory users recovery program file data this is the contents of the file system of the target machine uh, after we were able to mount the VHD files through guest mount so now the next thing that we're going to do we need to find a way to uh, dump the hashes now Windows to dump the hashes you have to target two files the SAM and the system so SAM and system can be found under Windows system 32 and you can dump them to the local machine uh, to, to, to my local machine so once we do that we'll be able to uh, crack the hashes <laughs> All right. So if we say sudo ls dash la, um, vht, right? The windows okay. Let me check this one. okay so then we go to system 32 let's see here yeah 
it is with uppercase s config and we have these two system and sam so what we can do we can copy them to uh, desktop and then we can use sam dump or secrets dump to extract the hashes so the same command here use system okay and here instead of ls la i'm going to say cp and then to desktop okay and the other command will be for the sam file so execute this command two times the first one will be for sam and the other one will be for system once you do that let's navigate now to desktop i think it's gonna be let's scroll up now okay as you can see here i copied both to my desktop and then i use sam dump 2 which is a tool to extract the hashes from these two files in windows file system the system and the sam supply the path to both files and we will to get the hashes as you can see we have administrator guest and the username that we were dealing with a while ago so what we're going to do we can try all the hashes online but none of them will work except this one take this hash we supply it to crack station and we get the password now this is the password that we can use to log in to that user using ssh that's what i did here so i logged in through ssh with that username and i supplied the password we found online and of course we were able to extract the user flag that is located under desktop now the next thing is to perform privilege escalation now in windows we can perform privilege escalation many many ways we can use winpiece import winpiece to the machine we can use power view uh, we can use power exploit we can use there are multiple scripts to perform privilege escalation enumeration but in this machine if we navigate to program if we navigate to the main directory of the c file, uh, the c disk we can see these directories if we go to program files x86 we can see that there is m remote ng so m remote ng is a program or remote connection management tool it allows you to connect remotely to any machine the problem with this tool is it saves passwords in plain text so if you navigate to the documentation of the program you will see that it saves passwords to uh, an xml file the xml file is located under um, here c users updata roaming m remote ng and under m remote ng you will see these files conf constants xml is the uh, XML file that stores the passwords used to log in remotely if we can grab a copy of this file we can grab a copy of this file basically using SCP let's go up so I used SCP to transfer the file okay this is the file I transferred the file using the SSH connection that I have access to and I transferred the file to desktop once I did that, I was able to view the contents of the file. Now, if you want to view the contents of the file, let me show you what I did. So let's open a new tab here. Cat conf. Okay. If you view the contents of this file, you will see a line here. Connect to console. Let's open this file using nano. It's, it's going to be way better. Nano conf. Yeah. Okay. So we have these connections. Okay. The f that's, that's, the, that's, that's the first one. Name DC. The connection. And if we a little bit go this way to the right. As you can see, it is RDB session. And here we have the password. As you can see, this is the password use and this is username this password is base64 and it's encrypted the only way to decrypt the password is to use a specifically designed tool to decrypt these kind of passwords so what i did i downloaded a tool called <coughs> let's scroll down it's 
let's see what I did here. There is a tool called M Remote NG Decrypt. I will put the link of this tool in the description of the video. If you see it inside this tool, it's specifically designed Python script to decrypt um, such kind of passwords. So what we do, we say Python 3. And then we supply the file name or the password itself. So dash S and here the password. Let's extract the password. And this is the encrypted password. As you can see, this is the password decrypted. So supply this password to a new SSH session where you choose the administrator as the username you want to log in with. And then lastly, we'll be able to grab the, the flag. <coughs> so that was it, guys. Very easy machine. The new thing that you might be that you might have learned is how to mount VHD files or how to navigate them using guest mount. Other than that, everything else is straightforward. So that's what it guys. I hope you like that and I will see you later.